Hi, everybody, and welcome back for week three of Accessible Learning with Technology. In our first couple of weeks of the course, we looked at why accessibility issues are important uh, for teachers and students, and we took a, uh, a deeper dive in week two into some of the guidelines and the legal regulations that govern meeting accessibility standards for students. Well, this week we're going to take a look at uh, some of the barriers that students still encounter when it comes to uh, being uh, fully able to access learning opportunities. And in some cases, those barriers are actually created by uh, existing guidelines and regulations, particularly things like uh, existing uh, institutional policies and practices and funding uh, available uh, for implementing solutions, as well as just the general knowledge set of teachers and, and the training of teachers in order to be able to implement accessibility solutions for their students. One of the things that we're going to do uh, this week before our class starts, I have a set of case studies, uh, that some selected case studies that I have picked for you. Uh, the first one being uh, the case of Navi uh, Donata versus York University uh, in 2018, the Ontario Human Rights Commission made a ruling about uh, her case against York University and uh, failing to meet her accessibility needs. Uh, the second case study that I have is uh, all about how existing policy and funding and well, the teacher shortages that a lot of the provinces are experiencing how those are causing students with accessibility needs to fall through the cracks. And the third case study re is uh, related to the landmark Right to Read report that came out a couple of years ago and whether uh, our current policies in uh, institutions and school boards and our current curricula in the different provinces, if they are actually denying students the right to read. I encourage you to take a look at all of these case studies. I have, again, a range of different types of resources available for you. Uh, some of them are shorter reads, some of them longer reads. I have some videos as well, uh, just to shake things up and give you different ways to, uh, to get the background on all of these case studies. I encourage you to take a look at all of them. But what I specifically want you to do is to pick one that, uh, that speaks to you. Sign up uh, for that. I have a, uh, a Google Sheet set up so that you can sign up for one of the case studies. Uh, I'm setting a limit of 10 people per case study because I want to set, uh, set up six breakout rooms in our weekly Zoom session. And I don't want uh, to have any of these case studies, any of the breakout rooms with nobody to, uh, to go and talk about them. So I want to divide things up a little bit. So add your name here where there's space available to pick one of the case studies. Uh, take a deep dive into that case study, be prepared to talk about it in class, and uh, we're going to look at, in class, summarizing what that case study tells us, what the implications of that case study are for uh, students and for teachers, and what we could or should be doing uh, in light of what we've learned from those case studies. And this, uh, this look at these case studies that I've selected is going to set you up uh, for the group mini presentations on barriers to accessibility that you will be doing in week four of the course when you and your groups run the show for our weekly Zoom session. Looking forward to seeing you in class this week.